Hi, everybody. Welcome to Tuesdays with Rachel. I'm glad you're here to join me with me today. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about how easy it is to teach a Right Start Math lesson. If you don't know me, my name is Rachel Anderson, and I have been homeschooling for 15 years. Of those 15 years, I have been using Right Start Math for every single year, simply because I've spaced my children out so far <laughs> apart. Um, so let's get going with the topic at hand. Uh, is some Right Start Math something that you can teach? Uh, when I go to conventions, I frequently hear from parents who express a concern. Can I teach Right Start Math? Maybe they are um, a good math student. They were a good math student. And so they learned math well, and they like what they see, the manipulatives, but they're, how, they're thinking, how can I apply these manipulatives to my math lesson? Uh, maybe you were a struggling math student and you see, yeah, I really can see how I would learn that way, but because I didn't learn it that way, how can I apply it? Um, maybe you were a real big struggling learner in math and math is one of those hated words, those hated subjects. And in fact, thinking about math kind of gives you the cold sweats. <laughs> if that is you, um, You'll be good, glad to know that you can teach Right Start Math. Today, I'm going to show you a math lesson and kind of walk you through to kind of see the, so you can see the components of it and maybe visualize yourself teaching it. But to do that, I need to share my screen. So hang tight while I flip it over real quick. Okay, so hang on. Okay, so here we are. One math lesson is only two pages right there. That would be a typical math lesson. Now this is taken from level A, and this is lesson 94 from level A. You will note the different highlighted, bolded sections of the lesson. Those are the different components. And so we'll kind of walk through that real quick. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is the objectives. The objectives are simply what is going to be covered in that math lesson. So in this particular math lesson, you will see that you're going to talk about dozen. You're going to teach your child about dozen, apply the term dozen. Uh, 12 and you will also teach your child how to partition the number in the teens so for example splitting 12 up between 10 and 2 that's all petitioning means here we are going to take a look at the materials uh, here a lot of parents think oh my goodness there's so many manipulatives do I have to use all of the manipulatives every day and no you don't uh, you will only use a handful of manipulatives every day sometimes just one or two manipulatives um, for this particular lesson your child is going to need their abacus uh, you will need to get an egg carton uh, the place value cards and the worksheets that's the only thing that's going to be needed now me being a mom of four kids and having to balance out a whole bunch of things I uh, schedule have my child get their own manipulatives while I do other things so before I get the lesson started I'm going to say hey McKenna you're going to need your abacus place value cards and the um, your worksheet so go ahead and bring those over while I finish this up <laughs> simple as that so maybe you can take that into your homeschool um, each lesson starts off with the warm-up section so this is where you are kind of gearing your child's mind towards math Maybe they've been working on spelling or reading or science or whatever subjects they've been working on previously, and now you're going to hone in on math. So this warm-up section kind of gets them mentally ready for your math lesson. Now, that being said, um, being a mom of four kids, I sometimes would um, try to cut corners. So if I noticed that my knew that my child knew something that was in the warm-up section, and I knew for sure they knew it. I'm not going to waste my time asking them questions. Um, if my child, uh, for example, the question here in this particular math lesson says, what is 22 plus one? Um, maybe I'll ask them that. What is 22 plus one, McKenna? And she'll tell me. And then I'll say, what is 22 plus two? The next question there. And then she tells me, then I'm gonna skip the rest of those questions. I'm not going to belabor them. Now, if she struggles on any of those, maybe I'll linger on those extra questions. But this is a way that I kind of trimmed the corners off of the uh, math lesson, take a few minutes off. Um, so just kind of helpful tip for you. Um, if, however, you have a struggling learner in your home, you may want to spend some time doing some of these warm-up questions simply because um, you want to know if they are retaining that information. Most of the questions in the warm-up section are, is material that has been covered in previous lessons. So it's another good way to see if your child's retaining that information. The next sections in the lesson are basically the lesson activities. This is where your child is going to explore new topics or new concepts. 
This is where they're going to be using the manipulatives. What I like about their lessons in the Right Start Math is there's tons of pictures. Um, this one only has two pictures, but many lessons have a whole lot more pictures than that. But you can see how um, you were to manipulate the manipulatives. If you were to write something on the board, what that's supposed to look like and so forth. So there's lots of pictures to help you know what the manipulatives are supposed to look like, um, what you're supposed to do with them, how your child is supposed to move the beads and, and that sort of thing. The next section is the practice and problems section. And each lesson looks a little bit different here, but really what it's doing is it's taking that bit of information that you've taught your child, that your child has explored, and we're going to dig deeper. We're going to let your child think deeper about them. So for example, in this particular lesson, you've talked about splitting up 12 between 10 and two. Now you're going to take that idea that they've explored just a little bit and you're going to take it further. So McKenna, split up 19, split up 15, split up 16. Is she able to do that? You know, so we're kind of taking that one concept and just digging deeper. Um, you'll see under that section called problem, there is a word problem that talks about the dozen. So it's taking the idea of dozen that she's worked on earlier in the lesson, and we're going to put it in the format of a word problem, making sure they're able to apply into everyday life the things that they are learning. It expands the depth of their knowledge. Um, the next section in this particular lesson is the worksheets. It will also be the section where you will find games usually. Um, what I love about this is they have the answers right there. The lessons right there, or the answers are right there. You do not have to thumb into the back of the lesson to find the, find the solutions to the worksheets. It's right there for you. Um, you don't have to find another book to look up the answers to the worksheet. Um, it's right there. If there's a card game, that's also where it will be included. At the very last thing for the lesson is the conclusion section. And that's just follow-up questions at the very end of the lesson, just to make sure um, they have, they've understood what was being taught and also kind of puts a nice little bow at the end. To be honest with you, most of the time I skip this section. Uh, if I knew whether or not my child knew the information or not. If they learned it a little too quick and I was a little concerned that it didn't absorb or if they kind of struggled through and I wasn't sure if they would retain the information, sometimes later on in the day, um, after lunch maybe, I would ask them a couple of these questions so that I can get a gauge on whether or not they retain the information, if we need to review any of the materials the next day or so forth. There is no lecture for you. You do not need to create the lecture. You do not need to write anything up. You do not need to prepare anything. My preparation each day is simply pulling the book off the shelf, opening it up to the lesson, and just reading. It's scripted for you. Here's how it works. So here's that same lesson. I'm going to highlight or forward it up so you can read this. Um, the warm-up section, it says, ask the child to count by ones to 60. So you turn around and say, hey, McKenna, or your child's name, McKenna, count by ones to 60. And off she goes. The next question, ask your child to count by tens to 200. McKenna, count by tens to 200. See how easy that is? Ask, again, ask, how much is 21 plus one? And if you don't know the answer, there you go. Almost every time it asks, you a question to ask a, your child the question, it gives you the answer. You don't have to think about it. You don't need to calculate it. It's all right there for you. No second guessing. It's right there for you. Um, for the lesson segment, where you are having your child do the activities, very straightforward. Look at this. Um, you're teaching your child the dozen, right? Okay, so here it says, show the child the egg carton. Here, child, here's my egg carton. Tell her that it holds a dozen eggs. McKenna, this holds a dozen eggs. Open the carton as shown. So now I'm gonna open up the carton. See how easy that is? There is no guessing. It's very, very straightforward. No lecture. Remember I told you that? No lecture. Instead, you're going to ask questions. Take a look at this. Look how many times you're asking a question to your child. This is just the first page. Here's the second page. I've bolded every single one or squared every single ask in this particular lesson. I don't care what level you're on, um, you will see in every single lesson all of these asks. Why? Because your purpose is to not be a teacher, you are the guide. In fact, I tell parents that all the time. You as a Right Start Math teacher 
are going to guide your child to understand. The teachers really are the manipulatives. Your child is going to learn by observation, by discovery, by experimenting. And that's how your child's going to learn the math concepts. You're not going to present math facts or um, math rules and then have your child you know, kind of repair it back to you what those rules are. Instead, you're going to let your child discover these rules all on her, their own. Now, I mentioned to you games. Most lessons have the games listed. Oh, I forgot about the explanation. Sorry. Let's do that real quick. Um, each on the each lesson will have in this explanation side. I don't know if you can see that real quick. Um, it had these little explanations. Now, with the explanations, um, Dr. Cotter has included information, extra information. Um, sometimes it's history on how things work. Sometimes it's an, an alternative to how to approach things. Sometimes it's like an observation that some children learn this way, some children learn this way. Um, this is really kind of more for the inquisitive parent. If you are like, why are we doing it this way? Or does this always work? This explanation is for you. Now, to be honest with you, here's the other page. To be honest with you, um, as a busy homeschooling mom, I rarely look at the explanations. Um, that's just kind of like an extra thing. It's not required for the teaching part. But if I find there's a segment of lesson that my child was struggling with, or I was curious as to why we're approaching it this way, um, the, the explanations was a great place to review. Now, back to the games. <laughs> So then lesson 94 did not have the games listed, right? Um, however, so I wanted to show you uh, a lesson from level D actually. And at the end of the lesson, you will see the multiplication memory game was to be included. Now, that does not mean if there is a lesson that does not have a math card game that you do not play a math card game. You really need to play a math card game every single day. The purpose of the math card games are to make sure your child is retaining their math facts, retaining the information that they're learning. So you don't want to skip that. You don't want to skip that. Um, if there is no math, no math card game listed, um, what do you choose? Well, you can choose a game that you've played the day before or the day before that. If you were going through the warm up section and you were like, oh, wow, uh, there was a section that we kind of struggled with. Let's play a game to, re to review that concept. Um, so that's how you can use the games. That's how you can adapt the curriculum to kind of fit your child. So um, a lot of the, the next question that Mary, many parents ask is, um, how long does this teach? I've got four kids, five kids. Um, I don't have time to teach math every single day, um, hours and hours at a time for every single child. So I'm going to give you kind of the rule of thumb because each child learns at a different speed and you have your own situations at your own home. But the teaching time generally for each level depends on the maturity of your child. So like level A is written for a kindergartner student, assuming the kindergartner can concentrate for this length of time and so forth. So each level will change in length based on the amount of concentration expected for that age group and the complexity of the lesson themselves or the concepts themselves. So I'm gonna give you some numbers here. It's basically what I use, um, many parents use as they uh, homeschool their kids, but kind of give you an idea of how long the lessons last. So level A, generally speaking, the teaching time lasts about 10 minutes. Level B, 10 to 15 minutes. Level C, the teaching time will take from 15 to 20 minutes. Level D, 20 minutes. Levels E and F take about 20 to 25 minutes to teach. Now, I will tell you in level F, um, I'm just finishing it with my daughter right now, and there were many lessons that took a whole lot less than 20 minutes. Um, level F is a fun le level. It's one of my favorites now, um, but there is a lot more independent work. So you don't need to teach. Your teaching time isn't as long. Um, now, I will tell you, those times are based on the teaching time, not the, the worksheets and not necessarily the math card games. So um, that's a little bit extra. So consider another five to 10 minutes for the math card games and another five to 10 minutes for the worksheet as needed for your student. Now, a lot of parents will say, but isn't it easier just to use a worksheet? Isn't it easier to just use this computer program or to have my child watch a video? And I'm like, well, yes, absolutely. It is easier for the parent right now. Okay, so when you're teaching your young child, if you have them work on independent work at that young age, 
they are going to become overwhelmed and they become stressed. And the more stressed they get, the less information enters into their mind. And you know how that is. If you are really stressed, you're intense right now, I can say something to you and a lot of that will just kind of fly over your head and you'll have to repeat that again or back, you know, scoot this video backwards. I don't want to miss that. Uh, material doesn't sink in as quickly and as easily when we're overwhelmed or when we're stressed. And that young child will get overwhelmed if they are required to learn this material by themselves. Math is complex. The benefit of teaching you teaching math and you being involved in their learning, you are developing this foundation of math concepts, things that they're going to learn now, then when they get into middle school and high school, they will not need it. You, they will not need you. They will have all that down and they can become independent students and learn on their own. Now, let me tell you an example of how that works. Um, if I ask a student, my child, you know, what is one plus one? So McKenna, what is one plus one? And she goes, hmm. Two? Okay, do you see that? Do you see how she doesn't know that for sure? I know it. I can see that she doesn't understand that material. She's taking a long time. She's confused. Notice how she asked um, the question. Maybe it's a two. Now the answer was two, so on a worksheet, she will list two and you will mark it correct. Uh, a computer might say, yep, they listed two, correct, let's move on. Um, but you are seeing the struggle. You are seeing where, wow, we really need to work on this a little bit. And so you back up and you review it. You solidify that before you move on. See how important that is. I cannot tell you how many times at conventions people come to me with older children upper elementary, middle school children, and they say, mm, I thought my kid was learning it. I thought they knew it. And in fact, a couple of years ago, I had a seventh grade mom, a mom of a seventh grader come to me and she says, my child doesn't know it. I thought they did. So we placed them into a second grade curriculum. The, the, the mom did not know that she did not understand the material. And so we had to back up and then the mom was stressed trying to get her, her daughter prepared for high school math. Take the stress away from your future self. Spend a little bit of time, a few years developing that foundation. Then when they get into middle school and high school, you can let them go and you won't have to worry about it because you know that they know the material. So um, can you teach Right Start Math? Absolutely. Even if you didn't do well in school in math, um, even if you didn't understand math, the lessons are so straightforward as you saw. There's no second guessing. They're easy to follow. You can teach. In addition, you might just learn something alongside with your children. Let me tell you, I was a math student. I loved math. I was a great math student. Well, great might be extreme, but I was a good math student. Um, I was a good memorizer. So what, here I am as a homeschooling mom teaching my kindergarten, no joke, kindergarten first grade kids. And I would be like in the middle of the lesson, I'm like, oh, that's why it does that. That's why it works. Or that's why this worked. Um, and my kids would just chuckle at me. They would be, get a big kick out of mama. But the, here's the thing. They were learning that mom is still learning and mom gets excited about learning. Let your kids see that you are still learning, that you still want to learn and that you get excited about learning, letting them know it's okay to learn and learning is a lifelong thing. So I hope you have seen how Right Start Math is easy to teach. It's, it's something that you can do, whether you're good at math, whether you struggle with math or whether you just don't know what to do with math. That can be something that Right Start Math is something that you can teach. Um, if you enjoyed this video or you got information out of it, I hope you click the like button. Click the like button at the very bottom of the screen. And if you know somebody else who um, would benefit from watching this video, um, I hope you share it with them because Right Start Math wants to help as many families out there to help their children learn and understand and enjoy math. If you have any questions, feel free to post them here on the Right Start Math Facebook page, um, or you can email me directly. My name, my email address is Rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L, at rightstartmath.com. I hope you join me next week as I'm going to talk to you about how to tweak lessons to tailor those lessons to your child's learning skills and, st and strengths and weaknesses. 
So I hope you join me next Tuesday. And until then, have a great week.